Hey everyone and welcome back. So today we're going to UV unwrap the fence model and we're going to make a few changes to the layout of this to begin with. So to start I have the fence collection made visible. Uh, make sure that you have everything else hidden and the great thing about doing it this way again is that we can press A and this will select everything just in the fence collection. If you remember that several videos ago now uh, I mentioned that we're going to have all of these just called cube and that's all of the different components of just the fence and that we would be combining them into a single object and not to worry about it at the time. So that time is now. And I've done this so that we can see a few issues that this will create and the way that we can solve it. So go ahead and select everything. Make sure you have all of the components of the fence selected. Press Control in J to join all of these together. And we're going to go over for tidiness and now rename this to SM underscore fence. Okay, so we now have our nice single fence object created. Um, and what I wanted to, to uh, kind of highlight here and show is if we go back to the materials again, just to really hammer this home that we now have two separate material slots on an object where we only really need one. So the great thing is uh, we can see this looking a little bit weird, but the nails are using the nail material, which if you remember is the one that we have a texture on. So I'm actually going to rename this as well. Uh, and I'm just going to name this one M underscore texture so that we know going forward, this is going to be our material with the texture already applied to it. And so you can see that the UV mapping on these are completely off, but that's perfectly fine. And then the fence is using its own uh, unique material. So what I want to do is I'm going to select the wood material Material and remove this, which means the whole object will now default to the M underscore texture material. And that is how I wanted to enter the UV mapping of this model. So if we go into edit now, go over to the UV editing tab and we can start breaking this down. Uh, we'll just do this section by section and try and find the best way to get this unwrapped. Now, if you're starting up Blender Scratch and you didn't save your user preferences, you might want to re-enable the UV sync selection so that we have uh, whatever we grab over here will mirror what we have selected over here. And also make sure to remember to put the live unwrap on in the UV window. And also with everything selected, the press U and get the live unwrap menu and live unwrap setting in the UV mapping menu here. Okay, so what I'm going to do first of all is I'm just going to grab all of our screws and we're just going to see how this looks if we just select all of those and unwrap those. So it's going to put those into four separate uh, mappings which is fine. Um, and I've just noticed as well that I have proportional editing enabled so I'm going to disable that which will allow us to move just the thing that we're holding. So ideally what I wanted to do is just select these screws and just shrink these down. And just move these off for a moment and see if we can fix this and improve this a bit later. But because we've made those modifications, the rotation and stuff to them, like I said, this isn't now going to fit under a single UV map if they're kept exactly the same. We could have just used the same space for all of them, but we can see that's not quite going to work just here. And because it's so simple and because it's just going to take the outside edge that we have, uh, that edge going around here, uh, we can see that's pretty much where it's classing the seam. So we don't technically need to add a seam to these. We can do. Uh, but again, this is extra data. So if we mark a seam here, we can see how much better this will get for us. So if I mark a seam here, so mark seam, we can see that is now unwrapped, although maybe not as we would like. Uh, and we can see that that is less stretched, but it is taking up more space. So in this case, I'm going to control Z and undo that. I'm going to avoid the extra data of the seams. And I'm going to have these nicer shapes without the seam for the nails because they take up less space and they're not going to be too important to in the, uh, in the visual side of things. So what I want to do next is let's focus on our left leg. So the post over here and we'll get this one unwrapped. So there's no real good way to do this. Ideally in an object like this where things like light baking and such will be a little bit more important. We want to try and hide the seams as much as possible. So that just means that we want to put them in a place which will be less visible. Now some of the seams are hidden in front, so that could be an option. But at the same time, when you're looking at the fence, you're generally, and when you're lining it up in the uh, level design as well, you're generally going to be facing that kind of thing towards the player. You really want to show off all of the detail, at least as the main initial focal point. So what I think I'm going to do here is create a seam up the back of the post instead and then shift alt select to grab all around the top press ctrl and e mark those seams and we can see that's kind of unwrapped over here i'm just going to grab the whole thing by pressing l and make sure we've got the top and then we can move this over so that is our first leg i think that looks pretty much fine I'd expected a little bit of this weird shaping going on because obviously we've scaled that at the top, so that's fine. And I think as far as, like I said, the seam goes, 
kind of do want to unwrap that properly at the top and yeah i think focal point wise that's going to be more hidden than if we tried hiding it at the front so i'm just going to do the same thing again over here i'm going to go for the same inside inside join here so i've just control selected down there and then alt shift select at the top will mark those seams and again we've got those unwrapped we just make sure that you grab all of this and then we'll move and then we'll move this out of the way over here as well for some reason all of this is just moved itself back um, so i'm just gonna grab the bits that i've already uv mapped so i've just gone into face mode and i'm just selecting with l all of the bits that interconnect keeping these just outside of the texture at the moment so that we can work with that a little bit later and that leaves the last two things really which are going to be these beams and again we can't share the mapping space because we've got these different knocks in the planks if we'd kept everything exact without rotating anything we could have kind of mirrored them um, and in fact looking at that we could have used the same space if we had uv mapped this before separating everything or before removing the modifiers um, as it is i think just taking up a little bit of extra space is going to be better than trying to get these two to sit on top of each other so what i want to do is work on the top beam first of all same again i think the best way to hide the seam is to go around the back so in edge mode and possibly in wireframe just go from this point to this point and another thing of course is before getting all of the uh, edges in place you can start marking seams and seeing how this is going to split things and that just reminded me that's why everything is going back to its initial position is because it's all part of one model so it's classing any unwrap that we do here to be separate so another good thing to uh, kind of keep in mind is your workflow if we had unwrapped this before joining everything that would have been a lot easier and that's probably what we're going to do in the future models these are just kind of things that i guess when i'm just working on a model I, I subconsciously just consider and apply into my workflow but, but when i'm trying to set things out into a video topic i've got certain topics that i want to address and i didn't really consider how that was going to affect the workflow so apologies there but this is uh, going to keep resetting itself so we'll just focus on one bit at a time and then move them into their relevant places but we can see that this is now unwrapped the first plank so we probably want to ease the edges up so we're going to get a loop cut here so control u mark seam um, and again yeah that's instantly looking much much better but it does show us as well that this is very much uh, condensed over here so again we want to ease up all of that data by marking the seam here and there we go we now have our nice plank so that's been separated off and that looks pretty cool again this is going to go back but it's nice just to see how it's looking before we do the final plank so we kind of already know what we need to do down here uh, we can grab in the same way we'll get the edge from here to here so that was control select to get those we can mark that seam and see how that opens it's going to be the same again really so too tight at both ends which means we just want to grab here and then shift alt select over here and mark seam and there we go we now have that all unwrapped um, i suppose the nice thing about having this all in one object is that it is kind of setting up the islands and i say that that's a problem that's only really a problem because we have live unwrap on if I wasn't live unwrapping everything, say I wanted to mark a seam here, so across here, I can mark this. Of course, it's not going to update the whole UV. Uh, and then what I would want to do is select just this post, press U, and then unwrap, and it will unwrap just that section. Uh, so what that means is that I could have then selected everything else, moved it out of the out of the way. So what I wanted to do originally was just keep everything down here so that I could see uh, a little bit more clearly in the middle. And then I could have came in, grabbed just this post, and then unwrapped that over here. So putting it all into one model wasn't the main cause of the issue. Uh, the main actual part of that issue was having the live unwrap selected. But having that combined with it all in one object did mean that every time it did an, a live unwrap, it unwrapped the entire model rather than just the bit I had selected. So if you like that kind of workflow, you can kind of tweak it and uh, work around so you can still have a little bit more control. Uh, but the main thing is now with all of this i'm going to press a to select everything anyway press u and it will kind of pack it into the uv island get a good kind of average um, and that's another thing you can do actually is you can average the island scales so on the uv drop down that means that it's going to make everything even the screws take up on average a relative amount of space um, and then the final step is we want to pack all of the maps into their correct color so i think the fastest way to do this is have face mode selected press L on the four screws. We're just going to move those out of the way for now, which means we can then B for box select, scale this down uh, with everything selected, and then simply press G to drag the fence into its own color. Now I think I've got all of these browns 
Uh, I think that was the fence, the post, and the bucket. So I know that I don't need anything else to come into this UV space, so that can take up pretty much all of the space. Press double B, drag just the nails. I think this was the area for the metal down here, so I'm just going to scale that up a little bit. Just in case we do have any other metal, so we will need to keep a bit of extra space for the post metal, and then that's going to be the metal for the bucket, so that's fine. So this will be the screws over here. And then if we go back in to look dev or material preview, we can see that we now have all of the correct colors in all of the correct places on our object. So we've got some pretty decent and clean seams on this one. This was a lot easier than with the, the rocks. Of course, if you've added a random edge loop as part of a demo, make sure that you clear that and then Remember also only to select that post and unwrap this, and scale it down and put it back in place. Just done a quick UV unwrap to get all of those back to a similar size and have it pack things out nicely. So this is what I mean. You can make very quick, easy mistakes in unwrapping. And I think that's what a lot of people get worried about uh, and maybe fear doing it. But after a while, it's very also quick and simple to then fix those problems. It's like a small puzzle. It can be kind of fun, a little bit relaxing, put some music on and do this sort of thing it can actually be quite a, a nice experience sometimes. So we now have our first three models UV unwrapped, which are our two rocks and our fence. I'm going to get to the some of the more fun stuff next time being our post. And then finally the bucket, which has a nice big number of uh, items to unwrap. Okay, so I'll leave that video here. As always, if you enjoyed these videos or find them useful, please do leave a like and share the video around. That really helps the channel and is greatly appreciated. And of course, do consider subscribing to be kept up to date with any of the content coming from any of the playlists on the channel. And make sure you hit the notification bell to get those updates. As ever though, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.